Welcome to this video. In this video we're going to start to work on the rear suspension and the first job that I want to tackle is uh, the radius arm mount and we're going to do away with the rubber bushed one and we're going to make our own competition radius arm mount so with uh, a spherical bearing instead of the rubber bush and I'll take you to my workbench and show you what it's all about. So these are all of the essential parts for my new radius arm mount. This is one of the original ones as you can see um, it's pretty horrible and the rubber has perished and all the metal is rusted but this is essentially what a radius arm mount looks like it's just a plate with a bush in it and it has a specific offset from uh, the plate because this uh, will dictate the toe angle for the rear wheels you can buy new of these you can also buy um, the same type of bush but with a polyurethane bush in there but um, I want to make one with a spherical bearing instead of a rubber push because this will give the rear suspension a, a lot more adjustability and um, it will be a little bit more robust. So what I've already done is I've made some steel plates. Um, this is a 3mm thick steel and um, as you can see the plate is a little bit bigger than standard push just to um, Make sure that uh, it gets spread its load a little bit better. The holes in the plates are a little bit smaller because we're going to use these housings for the spherical bearings. The nice thing about this is if your bearing is uh, on its way out, you can just buy a new bearing and uh, put it in the housing. So you won't have to buy a completely new mount, you just have to buy a new bearing. Because the offset on the bush has a specific height, um, we're going to need to get uh, this housing in a specific height as well. If you can remember, I've also uh, added a little strengthening plate on the inside of the chassis where the radius arm mount goes, so we're going to need to calculate that in as well. On a Series 1 Europa, the original mount goes on the outside of the chassis. My new mount will go on the inside, but uh, the thickness of the chassis and the strength plate have already been calculated in the position of the housing. So I've calculated that I'm going to need a certain back spacing for this. And uh, I've got some washers here that can simulate the back spacing that we need. Now I'm going to weld the housing to the back plate on this uh, height and I'm going to start by tacking it a little bit and then completely welding it on the back side and also completely welding it on the front side so it has uh, a lot of strength. So I've welded the bearing housings uh, to the little plates that I made. As you can see I weld them on the back of the plate as well as on the front of the plate. While I welded everything, um, the bearing housing shrunk a little bit and I couldn't get the bearing in. So uh, I sanded it out a little bit by using a little sanding drum on a Dremel. And now the bearing fits perfectly. As you can see, it's a very snug fit. So this is what the final setup will look like. Now obviously um, I'm going to remove the bearing and I'm going to paint this plate um, so that it won't rust but uh, this is the basic construction so my new radius arm mount just uses the original mounting holes and will sit in the exact same place but instead of the rubber bush there's a spherical bearing and instead of having it mounted from the front it's mounted from the rear as were uh, the series 2 radius arm mounts the benefit of this is that all of this extra range of motion 
will give us more adjustment and more accurate adjustment of the rear camber as well as the rear toe and this will um, also remove a little bit of friction this spacing between those two washers will uh, hold the radius arm and I have a, an unrestored radius arm here and I'm going to show you so this will slide on like this but before we can do that we need to enlarge this hole this is about 10 millimeters at the moment and we're going to enlarge this to a half an inch so that it will fit over this bolt but uh, I'll show you how we're going to do that in one of the next videos when we're going to completely restore the radius arm I've painted the new rear radius arm mounts and now it's time to install the bearing uh, I'm going to coat the inside of the insert and the outside of the bearing with a little bit of copper grease just to prevent corrosion and to make sure that the bearing won't um, rust to the insert and um, that we'll be able to get it out so that's in now we need to secure this with this circlip So now the circlip is in. Quickly clean the bush a little bit. This is the one that I did, that I did earlier. So now we're going to install these onto the chassis. So the new rear radius star mount is installed and we've also installed a new pivot pin. It's just a half an inch bolt with a washer. On this space there will be the rear radius star mount, then there's a high misalignment spacer and on the other side of the bearing there's also a high misalignment spacer and a nylock nut. And this will give us all this degree of motion while still retaining uh, the rotation that you need in the rear radius star mount. So this will give us uh, a lot more range from our uh, camber and uh, toe in or out uh, settings for the rear suspension. We've come to the end of this video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, you can post them below or send me an email through my website. And as always, you can find a completely written article with a lot of photographs on my blog and the links in the description below. Please subscribe to this channel so you won't miss the upcoming videos and I hope I'll see you next time. Goodbye!